Um, so yes, it's our, it's December 14th. It's our number 10 of 10 for this garden series. So thank you all for joining. And it's great to see big numbers again. It's just, you guys are fabulous to have around. So um, I wanna say welcome. Um, my name is Carol White Evans. I'm the chemicals and the environment agent here at the extension office in Sarasota County. I'm joined today by my coworker, um, partner in crime, Sarah Bostic, um, who is our sustainable ag agent, as well as Mindy, ba who is our um, gardens coordinator. And I know I never get that title right, so I will leave it at that. So I um, wanted to also mention our communication specialist, who is Kevin. Um, he's currently on va a well-deserved vacation. So these will not be posted until after the new year, but I think it's the last two, maybe three series that, that he will get up and running as soon as, as uh, he's back. So thank you for joining um, the Edible Garden Series today. We're offered every Monday, um, actually this is the end, but every Monday from 12 to 12.30. 12 um, today's topic, we're gonna talk about photos for insect and plant identification and diagnostics. So I'll spend a little bit about 10 minutes discussing that topic, and then we'll open it up for questions, any question that you, you might have. So in the meantime, you can go ahead and put, if you have a question, you can put it in the chat box, but at the end we also um, will, and we'll monitor that chat box and then, um, if we have time, we'll open that up for just questions where you can ask. So um, with that, I'd like to get started. Um, Sarah, are you recording? Yes, we are okay, recording. <laughs> Thank you. So, okay, so Edible Gardening Series Session 10, the perfect picture. So taking photos for insect and plant identification. So what happens, the reason this we came about this series is that um, we get a lot of people who either lived here in Florida or have just recently moved. We get a lot of Northerners that move to Florida who um, love to garden and then realize when we get into Florida, um, it's just, it's, it's a lot different in uh, trying to garden in Florida. So we get a lot of questions. So we decided to put together these little mini series um, to try to answer and address some of those questions and then answer other questions you might have. So let's get on it. So virtual help with insect and plant identification. So um, we have the service here at the Extension Office where we help you with insect and plant identification as well as plant diagnostics and um, insect control strategies. We used to do most of this in person. That was pre-COVID, just like everything else. But now um, life, like everything else, it's mainly transitioned to online. So with that has come some of its own challenges. So we wanted to, to um, put out there a few little tidbits on how to take good pictures to send them our way. So um, we still do in person. So now that our office is open, you can still bring things into the office. It's just, you know, Sarah or I may not be in the office on that day, but we're, we're um, they let us know when something comes in, but you can bring it in, you can bring in flat front, fresh plant material, excuse me, or fresh insects. Um, you can put those into Ziploc oh, bags. And the best thing to do with that is what? to um, put it in the refrigerator. Um, if you have a, a plant sample, put it in the refrigerator. That way when we, we bring it in, it's, it's as fresh as it can be. And then by the time we get to it, it's still fresh. And the same with insects. Um, two ways for insects, you can either bring them in um, if you can, you know, if you can pick them up and put them into a baggie, you can bring them in live. If they're small, you can put them into um, at alcohol. So basically like your 70% uh, um, uh, isopropyl alcohol. The only thing I would prefer you not do is avoid samples that are old, dried out pieces and parts um, because that makes it very, very difficult to ID. Um, a lot of times I get people who, who will sweep up a bunch of dust and then ask me what insects are in that dust. So um, that's that's a little bit of a challenge. Also, um, insects that are on on tape, if, if you do it, you don't want to tape the ends together because that just squishes that insect and makes it almost impossible. Because for the first thing, they're already going to be fairly small to begin with. And then when you squish them on that tape, it almost makes it nearly impossible to ID. So those two things I we ask you to avoid. <laughs> so those are fresh samples though. So that's bringing into the lab. The second one are pictures. So with that, quality mat matters. So usable pictures have to be in focus. So we're gonna break each of these down, but high resolution as well. Um, 
when you when you're taking pictures of plants and insects, you don't want to just take one. You want to do perspective and multiple pictures. So you can never send up us enough pictures. And also um, using some sort of a grid or a um, an object that gives size um, and perspective of what that that insect or that plant, especially like a plant disease, what that what size of that that uh, disease is, and then giving us as much detail as possible. So with this, as you can see, this picture, you had no idea of really what it was to begin with, but they're trying to take a picture of this pepper. Um, so this is a, um, a pepper that did not grow correctly, but the picture obviously um, picked up the background. So that is one of, one of the, the challenges that we face. So first thing, focus, focus, focus. It's almost impossible to take good quality photos through a Ziploc bag or behind some sort of of plastic because the camera has a very, very difficult time trying to focus. And these are all true, true pictures. None of these are fake pictures that we took. These are all pictures that were sent in by customers. Um, you know, a lot of times we still can, you know, I can tell this is probably a horse fly, but in order to ID it down to, to genus and species, um, very, very difficult. I do like that they did put some perspective here. So I do know how big that insect is. But things like this, um, you know, if that's a scale or if that's a mealy bug, um, it could be a, a fungal growth, but it really is an, an insect. Here we have the, what I was saying, the, the plastic. So this is actually a sticky card, um, but when they took the picture, it didn't know where to focus. So this was the picture I received. And then this is behind some sort of, um, it was the, uh, those little popper plastics. So um, I ended up not even knowing what this one was. So focus is really important. And when you take those pictures, you wanna look at the pictures yourself before you send them to us so you know that what, what, you're at, what we're actually gonna to get to see when you send that picture. Um, this one actually not a horrible picture, um, but in order to make a positive ID, um, this is actually closer than, than the, the original picture. But when you blow this up, it gets really pixelated and I can't tell um, with this being dark, you know, is it a fly, is it a bee, is it a potter wasp? But if you're asking me, please identify it and then give, you know, tell me what the control measure is for this. Um, that's where it comes in, that's where it's really important to know exactly what that insect is. Because if you remember some of our other programs, um, insect identification is really important if you're talking about control strategies, because you want to make sure you have the correct insect that you're, you know, when you're using a product, that that's what it's going to control. So when you're taking pictures, really important. Um, this is when you're, you're sending them directly to us from your phone. So you can, you can share them either um, to our email from your phone. When you're doing that, you want to choose actual size in your phone. In the settings of it, you want to send us the actual size. A lot of times they'll ask you if you want to send a small one, um, um, but don't do that. You want to send the actual size. And if it's too big, like, you know, 16 megabits is going to be over the, the email size, it's going to they also have a link so that you can actually create a link that you send to us and then we go online and we're able, we're, it's a link that it sends in the email that we're actually able to get to. Because what happens when you send that small size, even though on your phone it may look great, um, when we get it and we have to blow it up, especially when it's something small, it just gets extremely pixelated and, and impossible to see. So always make sure that you're sending the actual size of that file. In pixels matter. Um, I received this. Um, making sure your specimen is on kind of a solid background helps. You know, if they had put a piece of paper around this, would have helped because what's happening is the the camera's trying to pick up all of this um, all this grain within this bench, and then they asked me to ID what this was. And although I I knew what family this was, I wasn't able to ID it down to species. Um, because once I tried to blow that up, you couldn't tell. So um, making sure that solid backgrounds work. Anytime you have a lot of um, busyness behind you, it makes it very, very or behind the, the specimen, it makes it very difficult to, to try to, um, for that, that phone to focus in on that one little, little speck. <laughs> Here's another um, you know, perspective of that. So digital, digital cam cameras, Again, they don't know what to focus on when we were using the autofocus 
setting. So you want to have just that one object with a solid, solid piece behind it. This photo looks beautiful, but when we go to blow it up, let me see, I think I have a little, um, when we go to blow it up, you can tell that we then can't tell what this is. So this is just a, a good example of, um, you know, these grass blades are, are beautifully in, in, uh, in focus where the seed pod is not. When you're taking pictures of plants or insects, um, really important um, to have that perspective from the, the, um, the whole plant. So it's good to see what's happening with the whole plant or with the system, especially if it's in your garden. If, if this is only affecting one pepper, pepper plant versus all of your pepper plants, or if it's your pe peppers and your tomatoes. So getting a full plant, the full area um, perspective, then getting both the front and the back of the leaf when we're talking about leaves, getting the front and the back is really important. Um, and then getting a close up of the area that's that's problem. So um, another thing, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later too, is that putting it again on some sort of a grid. This is great for um, plants. This is a one by one grid. You can make it in, in a Word document, uh, print it out and have it, um, have it as your reference. A little bit more difficult for insects because insects tend to be less than a half an inch long, big. So, so when you're putting them on a one by one grid, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't make sense. You would really want to put it near a ruler, especially like the, the uh, metrics part, right? The uh, millimeters and, and centimeters of your ruler for insects. But getting the front and the back and, and the area that is, is um, uh, the problem is really important. So you can never send us enough pictures, trust me. <laughs> If you have to do it in multiple emails, you can do that. So with this, um, I just wanted to give you an idea of um, when you send this leaf in, uh, you know, not sure what it exactly initially, if you had just sent this leaf, a picture of this leaf of what it was. But then as you get closer, you'll see right here is an insect. So here's an insect. So a better picture, but still a little bit difficult if I had to ID this insect. So you get a closer picture. So now you're gonna to wanna to get profile pictures of this. So you're gonna get wanna get the top, so the dorsal, a ventral side, a side view, and then from the front. So with this, I you know, obviously this one's fairly easy. This is a ladybug, uh, uh, the pupil stage of a ladybug larvae. So had you only sent this picture and it looked great on your phone, you, you needed to know that it would have been very difficult to, to blow it up. So, so taking those close-up pictures, having them from the side, from the, the top, from the front view really helps, especially with insects, because we have a lot of insects in like one family that there's little nuances um, that make a difference on, on uh, which, which species it can be. And then size matter. So this was the only picture sent with this. So Again, you always want to send the whole plant and the leaf, but again, more close-up pictures of this. And also, um, not quite sure what the, the issue was on this, whether it's, um, it's hard to tell whether this is a start of a fungal issue or if this is an insect um, problem to begin with. So one picture is, is very difficult to get that, the, whole, um, the whole story behind what, what's going on with that, with that uh, problem. Again, more is better. And then another perspective. So again, using a grid, a roller coins, um, in this case, your hand, just to give that, that perspective of size. So this is a lot you know, easier with, with plants because you can hold them. Insects is a little bit more difficult, but with insects, if you can get it into a, a container, um, what you can do is you can get it in a container, put it in the freezer. You can put it in the freezer for a few hours, um, and then if you can take it out, um, usually it's actually better if you want to kill it completely, put it in there for 24 hours, it will kill it completely. And then you can, you can take it out and manipulate it. Um, you know, things even like wasps, they don't sting after they're dead. So you can manipulate it so you can take more pictures of it. And then again, context, size, and detail. So um, here's the full plant, which is great. But had they only sent this full picture or even just this one, which is a little bit closer up. So you know there's some, some chewing damage. So that could be either a, um, like a flea beetle or Sri Lanka weevil. So some sort of a, a beetle issue. But as you get closer here, as you notice here, 
this is all leaf miner damage. So that close up gives us that visual that yes, there's more than one issue going on with this. So you're having more than one insect problem with this with this uh, this green. So um, bringing in more pictures is is a very good idea. And then, <clears throat> you know, grass is an example. This is this is a really good example. Um, just taking that full perspective and saying what's wrong with my grass. Um, you know, like the brown parts of the blade, like, you know, this is, this is too far, far out to do any sort of diagnosis. So you want to get the seed heads, especially if you're trying to determine what type of grass it is. Seed heads, the stem, the runners, um, the ground and the root system, those are all really kind of important to know in order to, to uh, determine what type of grass or the diagnosis of that grass. So again, you want to keep it in perspective. Let me see if this will work. Come on. Oh, there we go. Um, so here's your here's that grass, but then you're getting the runners or the stolons, and then getting that closer of, of that that disease part and seeing what's going on with that, uh, so we can make a, a proper diagnosis of that. With that, give as much detail information as possible. We have um, <clears throat> I couldn't get a good picture of this to to do a, a, a portrait uh, version of it. But we have both our insect and our plant diagnostic submission forms. So on this, it tells us, um, you know, you want to show us where it was found, what time of day it was found. So when we're talking about insects, the location, did you find it inside or outside? Or was it on a plant on the ground? Was it in your house? And then also, if it's in your house, was it near the kitchen or in, or in your pantry or in the bathroom or under a sink? Um, does it have wings? So we know, you know, whether if it has wings, it knows that we're, it's an adult. If it doesn't have wings, that's an immature stage. So it means you have some reproduction going on of that insect. So what, however much information you can, can collect for us, the better for us to make a proper diagnosis of that. And with that, um, we have the Insect ID Lab up at UF. Um, you can send uh, samples up there as well. They cost to send them up there, but um, uh, the director of that lab is fabulous. We have our uh, the Distance Diagnostic and Identification System Lab, so the DDIS, um, and then of course your local extension agents. So uh, Sarah and I and Marguerite and and Mindy will help, and so will Wilma. So um, we're you know you have plenty of people around you to help. So um, you know you don't have to be alone and try to figure out what kind of an insect or kind of plant or disease you have. So with that, that wraps up our number 10. <laughs> so we wanna say thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We love this series. We love seeing returning names and we love seeing new names every week as well. So we'll start again in January with a whole new set of, of programming.